Um, so in this one, in this video, I want to talk about how to get user input. And uh, okay, so the way I like to do it is is character by character, and students never like it this way. But this is the way I'm going to show first. Let's do the simplest thing possible. Uh, let's get one character from the user. Um, so let's call the character C, and uh, or how about share and is equal to get char and to print a single character you can do uh, put char and so let's do it so I'm gonna type in the letter A and it then it just prints the letter A so no big deal right um, so let's let's make it a little bit more complicated what if you want to get lots of characters uh, you know, you could do that 10 times or 15 times, but what if you just want to get like a, a line? Um, so I'm going to do something that is done all the time, but it looks extremely weird the first time you see it. So bear with me. I'll do while. Um, actually, I, I better declare share outside this. And this should just be share. Sorry, share. And share is just going to be declared to be of character type. Okay. So this looks complicated, but it is the totally standard way to do this. And so let me uh, work through what's happening here. Um, you know, we haven't even talked about a while loop, but it's exactly the same as in Python. So I think you understand what's happening here, right? Uh, EO EOF stands for end of file. There's a special character that stands for end of file. Usually it, it's minus one. Um, and I, sh you know, by character I'm using English word character, not the C data type, because we've already seen this thing is not good at storing negative one. It thinks negative one is 255. So if you actually want to catch end of file character, you need to use an int instead of a char. Um, what happens here? is each time through this loop share gets assigned whatever the user typed in and then uh, okay so this returns something right which gets put into share now the equal sign is also a function you know you could imagine are the assignment equals you could imagine that we write it like this or something as eq a b so that would just be you know put the contents of B into A, then it could very well have a return value too. And in fact, the the C the C assignment equals has a return value. And what does it return? What makes the most sense? The thing that was just assigned. So what it does every time is it outputs the thing that was just assigned. And so that goes into this space, and then that gets compared to this. And we're basically checking to see if it's equal to minus one or not. So that's what's happening every time. So as a side effect of this, the variable share gets the current character put into it, and then because of the return value, we can we can check to see if if the input is over or not. Uh, so I, I know it takes some getting used to, but that's the way you do it. So now let's do put char uh, share. Don't know why I always want to put that e on there, and let's see what happens. So, uh, hey, market martyrs day. And it prints the same thing out again. So several things about this might seem a little bit mysterious. One, <laughs> it's still running. And you also notice that it just it doesn't do anything until I hit return, um, which might also seem kind of weird. Um, so we talked last semester a little bit about standard n. So there's something somewhere in this computer called standard n. It's just a, a memory location somewhere that's like a buffer that fills up with characters. And as I type, the characters get put into standard n. And um, when I hit return, the program processes all the characters that are in the standard n buffer and then after it does that it comes back here and prompts me again and waits for more because I still haven't typed in the end of file symbol so 
you know, as it's going through the standard in buffer, it's also printing out each character as it encounters it. And that's why it's just parroting what I'm parroting. It would be cool if you could write a program to parody what you type in, but it's just parroting, just repeating back exactly what I typed. And uh, so now I, let's say that I want to stop, so I just type minus one, right? <laughs> It doesn't work because this is just the character dash followed by the character one, not the character minus one. And so the way you do the end of file character is control D. Control D is what I just typed. That's how you do it on Linux. I think on Windows it's control Z, but who cares what happens on Windows? Um, oh my god, there are lots of files in here. Like, let's, what's in this file? Uh, junk.c. A bunch of stuff like that. So what I want to point out here is that um, you can pipe things into standard n. In fact, that's what that's what standard n does. Is it? I uh, sorry. That's what pipes do. Is they just take the output of this program. You know, cat is just going to dump this thing to the screen. It's going to become the standard n of prog. And prog doesn't care that it's coming from the pipe instead of the keyboard. Watch, it'll just, what it'll do is just dump it all back out to the screen again. And you can't even tell anything happened because it just did the same thing as the cat command. But it's actually, you know, yeah. So see what I'm saying? So if I were to do echo, uh, my, that's a lovely their cuff on your coat and then pipe that to prog it would just what's going on there uh, I think the problem is me of course I don't know what I did wrong but how about something simpler echo ABC prog just says ABC uh, and right, so that's going to be useful in several projects. You can deal with the input character by character. I think this is really the way to do it. You know, Dennis Ritchie does it this way in his intro to C book. But inevitably, students become corrupted and they prefer to use this function called scan f. Dun -dun -dun. So you can also do the same thing with scan f so let's let's do it that way and it, it, superficially it seems better because you can get a whole you can get a whole string at once and <laughs> instead of doing it character by character so let, first you need some kind of string buffer and the easy way to do that is to do uh, just allocate a hundred bytes you know another another way to do the same thing would be like this and uh, the only difference would be that in the first case the memory is on the heap and in sorry in the first case the memory is on the stack and in the second case the memory is on the heap and heap memory also has some other properties that are maybe we should talk about those later so this program anyway will work exactly the same whichever one of these you choose so let's choose that one and uh, so scan f takes formatted input and so I should say what format I want so I just want a, a string and let's put that in the buffer and after that let's try to print the buffer uh, so I'll do printf uh, buffer and what does what is wrong what is wrong? Uh oh, because it's not a string literal. It's just a warning. Oh, who cares about warnings? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, that was weird. I guess those things were still in standard out or something. Not really sure what just happened. Let's do it again. Uh, okay, so who can tell me? what's happening. Actually, I'm not really sure what's happening. Um, it could be that there's some trash that's in that memory. 
Wow, it's saying wow. And then some, it's obviously printing a bunch of junk. And why is it doing that? I'm going to stop the video and investigate, sorry. Ah, uh, got it. And, uh, okay. So hopefully that just refreshed the whole screen. I know I've had some problems with that before. So the problem is that I wasn't saying how wide uh, the string should be, and it should be 35 characters wide. Right, so let's try it again. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, the problem that time was that I ran the wrong program. See how I ran a.out? That's just what was compiled before. So the program is called prog and it works. Um, so you just type some stuff. But let me show you something kind of irritating about using scan f is if I type something like a, b, c, d, and I'll give you projects, you know, during the class and you'll want to get what it does is when it gets to the first space it considers the the word to be over so you'll try to read these uh, character at a time and it just doesn't work very well let's see if let's see if I can get something wrong to happen um, if I do a b c d and it actually is it seems to be working fine but just be careful with the scan f. I don't, really don't like scan f. I prefer to do it character by character. Anyway, um, let's suppose that I wanted to get all the characters in just one shot. Um, so it could still use a, a buffer. By the way, this is just initializing the buffer to contain nothing but zeros initially. And let me get my my, my char going here, and I'll do while uh, c equals Get char is not equal to EOF. Um, now I want to, you know, put something in the buffer. I need a counter though. Let's use I as the counter. It's going to be a, a one byte counter, but that's okay because buffer is short. And this uh, initializes I to be zero. Um, so I'll do buffer I is equal to uh, the character that just got typed in. Now I need to I need to increment my counter. You know, initially it's zero, then it needs to go up to one and two and so forth. Um, so what I would normally do is like this. That will do it. But I don't want to distract you by explaining how that works. So let's do it like this. And now I'll just put an increment here. So I goes up by one. And I'm missing a match. I did the open bracket twice. And let's run prog. So, hello, my friend. And I'll do control D. And now it prints out the whole thing that I typed in, including spaces. So, you know, C is not very good for string processing. Python is a lot better. You know, with Python you could easily split this according to the space, and you can write programs that do things like that in C. But that's how you do the uh, basic string input. Now what if you wanted to get a number from the user instead of a string? Um, then you could do it like this. So you need to um, type in the person's age. And so you, could you do this? If you do this character by character, it's a serious pain. So actually, scan f is useful here. And um, so, what format do you want it to be in? Probably that. And uh, so, there's something a little funny here, which is I have to use the address operator. And um, that's because scan f is going to modify the variable age and if I just passed it if I did this without the ampersand then scan f would uh, have to make a local copy and it could modify the local copy but not the copy that's back here in this function so to let age be modified in this other function I have to pass it not the variable but the address and also that's just the the definition of scan f and the compiler will yell at you if you don't put the ampersand there. <laughs> what 
Why does it never do what I say it's going to do? Um, um, anyway, you have to put the ampersand there. And all right, so I'll do that. And how about we could even put in some prompts here, like uh, enter your age. And then I type it in there, and then I could say, your age is, and let's run it, uh, print F, not print S. So my age is 44. I'm just kidding, I'm actually 37. But yeah, so you can see it works, right? And um, so what if I take this off? It should be a complete disaster, even though it's compiling. You know, you actually want it to blow up. See? You, you want it to blow up at compile time, not when it's running. Because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to put a program out into production that's secretly going to crash when some user types something in, like its age. What if you change this to a different format, like maybe hexadecimal? Uh, 44. Actually, it should. Whoa. So, um, do you see what happened here? It's because 44 in decimal is actually 68 in. Uh, no, no, sorry. 44 in hex is actually 68 in decimal. Let's try to do the 31 oct equals 25. Uh, December joke, which is saying Halloween is equal to Christmas. We can do. We should be able to do that like this. Whoa. Okay. Ah, uh, that's not informative. Enter your age. I am 31. I wish I was 31 again. And it says your age is 25. Ha! <laughs> Never get tired of that one. Um, so of course things work exactly the same way if you're talking about uh, floats. And um, so here you have to do F, of course, and this should also be F. And I'll run it. So my age is 37.57659, precisely like that. And then it says your age is such and such. And it's, notice that it's not giving me artificial levels of accuracy. It's rounding off here. Um, because the float can only keep track, like we said. You know, by the way, I said it's like five or six decimal points of accuracy. That does, that's the whole number, you know what I mean? So even if, if it could be a, an enormous number with no decimal part whatsoever, and still only the first few numbers would be correct. If you want to do... We haven't talked about this, have we? Like um, the formatting of the float works a little bit differently than the formatting of the other things. So I'll let's say that I'm I'm e years old. Then it'll say uh, your age is 2.72, and this is telling it that I want two decimal points to appear after or two numbers to appear after the decimal point and two before. Um, what if I'd said my age is 123.182818.28 then it uh, it's still you know what this must be this is the first two so what does the first two do that reserves that uh, character width for the the first few digits, uh, the, des the digits to the left of the decimal. <sighs> Very well. Um, I can't think of anything else to say about input-output from the command line. There's a lot more to say about input and output from files, but um, I'm going to stop here.